an interstellar object, 3i Atlas failed the simplest test. It crumbled well before the sun could destroy it. This premature breakup is the clue. What broke first? Internal heat, extreme spin, or simply its own ultra-fragile structure? We unpack what a crumbling alien comet says about its creation in another star system. The weakness is the key to the mystery. Shocking statement. An interstellar comet failed the simplest test, staying in one piece. That failure may be the most useful result we could ask for. We'll unpack what a premature breakup means for internal structure, why weak tensile strength can be a clue to how these bodies form, and what to watch for in future detections. If 3i Atlas crumbled, does that imply layered, ultra-porous material or heat-driven volatile loss? Stay with this because the implications reach from telescope scheduling to how we design close-pass flybys of the next visitor. What broke first, gravity, heat, or the comet itself? A visitor from another star system fell apart before it reached peak solar heating. That timing is the clue. If the sun didn't do its worst yet, something inside 3i Atlas gave way early. 3i Atlas is the third confirmed interstellar object, after 1, I, Umwamua, and 2, I, Borisov. Interstellar means it came from outside our solar system with a path that is not bound to the sun. Observers had a short window to track it after discovery, and reports pointed to fragmentation well ahead of perihelion, the closest point to the sun. That early split stands out because many comets brighten and vent gas as they fall inward, but hold together until they are much hotter. The consensus view is simple. As a comet nears the sun, sunlight heats its surface, ices turn to gas, and jets of vapor and dust grow stronger. This outgassing often peaks near perihelion. Many long period comets survive that ramp, even if they shed small pieces. The working hypothesis for 3 I Atlas is that the failure started earlier, before the normal thermal peak, which points to an internal trigger rather than an external maximum. Three forces matter here. Thermal stress is heat-driven cracking. When the surface warms faster than the interior, different layers expand by different amounts, and that mismatch opens fractures. Rotational spin-up is when jets act like small thrusters. If they push off-center, they speed up the comet's rotation. If the spin rate passes a critical threshold, weak material can fly apart. Tidal forces are the pull from gravity gradients. Near very massive bodies, tides can tear a comet. But far from those bodies, the effect is minor. Tensile strength is key across all three. In plain terms, tensile strength is how much pull the material can take before it tears. We have a useful benchmark from Rosetta at Comet 67 P. Churyumov Gerasimenko. Its cliffs and pits showed that parts of the nucleus have very low strength, measured in pascals to a few kilopascals. That is softer than packed snow and closer to a weak foam. Borisov, by contrast, behaved like a textbook comet, with a steady coma and production rates that rose as it neared the sun and fell after. These two cases show that small bodies can span a wide range of strength and response even within a narrow size class. Think of two end member structures. One is a porous, aerogel-like rubble, where grains barely touch and voids dominate. The other is a welded ice rock laminate, where layers fuse into a sturdier stack. High porosity means low thermal conductivity, which sounds protective, but it also creates steep temperature gradients. Those gradients concentrate stress at layer boundaries. In very porous media, heat can also reach deeper volatile pockets through cracks that open as the surface warms. That can drive early jets in odd directions and increase spin. Laboratory work on icy dust mixtures and Rosetta-derived estimates place cometary tensile strength from tens of pascals up to a few kilopascals, 
depending on grain size, ice content and sintering, which is the weak bonding of grains by heat. An early breakup points to the bottom end of this range or to strong anisotropy, layered weak planes that act like pre-cut seams. Under that geometry, even modest spin-up can exceed the break limit before the sun's heating peaks. A second hypothesis is volatile rich layers with trapped gases that begin to sublimate at lower temperatures, prying the structure apart from within. If internal weakness is the driver, then composition and fine structure become the central puzzle. Orbital path and brightness only tell us where it came from and how big it might be. The failure mode hints at grain sizes, porosity, and how the layers were built. So, the mini payoff is this. Early fragmentation argues that at least some extrasolar comets are more fragile than many long period bodies from our own Oort cloud. That nudges models toward new internal architectures with extreme porosity or directional weakness. Next, we turn that fragility into formation clues. What it says about the zones and conditions where these objects first took shape. What a crumble says about alien building blocks. If a small body falls apart easily, it points back to how it was built. The link is direct. Strength comes from how grains stick, how ices fill the gaps, and what kinds of stresses were frozen in during birth. For an interstellar fragment like 3i Atlas, that weakness hints at the assembly lines in other planetary systems. Let's set the stage. Young stars grow disks of gas and dust, far out where sunlight is faint. Water and carbon-bearing gases freeze onto grains. This is the icy outer disk. Closer in, temperatures rise and solids become a mix of rock and some ice. That is the mixed ice rock region. Porosity, which is the fraction of empty space in a solid, captures how gently or violently these grains came together. Volatile inventory, meaning which ices are locked in and how much, records the local temperature and pressure when the object formed. Colder zones trap more fragile ices like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Warmer zones favor water ice mixed with dust and rock. Two hypotheses compete to explain an early crumble. One says the body is an ultra-porous aggregate. Think of grains barely linked by weak bonds, built in a cold, calm setting that never squeezed them hard. The other says it is layered and pre-stressed, with pockets of super-volatile ices sealed under tougher crusts. As it warms even a little, those trapped ices turn to gas and pry open the weak planes. Both routes can fail early, but for different reasons. We can anchor this with a reference point. 2. I. Borisov looked like a fairly standard comet. Its coma grew, and its dust-to-gas output stayed within ranges seen in long-period visitors to our Sun. That behavior points to a nucleus that vents in a steady way as heating rises. Put that next to 3. I. R. Atlas breaking early and you get real diversity among interstellar objects. Same, broad class, different internal blueprints. A simple analogy helps. A weakly sintered snowpack fails when small layers lose support. It collapses under modest stress. A laminated ice sheet can hold longer, but hidden cracks guide a sudden fracture once stress finds the seam. Give both the same heat input and you do not get the same outcome. One sags and sheds, the other snaps in slabs. The mode tells you about the layers, not just the thermostat setting. Here's what physics adds. Porous media have low thermal conductivity, which is a measure of how fast heat moves through a material. When the surface warms, the interior lags. That sets up temperature gradients, and gradients drive internal stress. At the same time, Gases from shallow ices take the easiest path out. Small jets form and act like thrusters. Models show that even tiny, off-center jets can spin a weak body past its critical rotation rate over days to weeks. 
Once the spin crosses that limit, cohesion is no match for centrifugal pull, and pieces separate. We have seen similar stories in our own backyard. See 2019. Why 4 Atlas broke into many chunks well before perihelion. 73P Schwarzman Wachmann fractured along preferred lines, with some fragments spinning up and disintegrating later. These cases taught a clear lesson. Fine structure and volatile pockets matter more than total size. Fold 3I Atlas into that list, and you add an interstellar point to the same curve. The thread running through this is variety. Strength, porosity, and ice mix are not fixed. They reflect a spectrum of planetesimal pathways across other systems. A working hypothesis is that 3I Atlas pushes models toward colder, gentler aggregation or volatile rich layering scenarios. That shifts priors about what the average interstellar comet looks like under stress. Now we translate those implications into action. Next, we focus on how to catch these objects early, what colours and spectral lines will flag fragile builds, and how to design flybys that can handle a visitor that may not stay whole. Conclusion A breakup before perihelion is a clue, not a failure. 3. IATLAS shows interstellar comets can be ultra-fragile, which reshapes how we model their birth zones and the stresses that matter most. The consensus starts with weak cohesion and uneven heating. Alternatives include layered weak planes or trapped supervolatiles. What matters next is how we watch. Track early color curves to spot fresh surfaces. Flag sudden fading, asymmetrical comae, and fragment trains. Trigger rapid response spectroscopy to catch volatile lines before they vanish. Those signals set telescope priorities and safer flyby plans. The next visitor may hold together or not. Fragments can carry the sharper story.